The narcissist smear campaign is one of the most unfathomable things that you can ever come across. It's the last thing you expect. It's the final nail in the coffin of an intimate relationship in particular. It's the revelation of truth to you about who the person actually is. But it's a terrible, terrible shock. This person that you were very close with, that you trusted, that could have been your intimate partner, that was maybe a family member or someone you deeply trusted in a work situation to have your back, dumps you out of the blue and leaves you in a total state of shock as to what actually has happened. You're grappling with reasons you know to to make it understandable that maybe there's something wrong with them maybe they're going through something maybe they're stressed maybe 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 but when the smear campaign become known becomes known to you and you understand that this person that you loved and trusted is has not only dumped you and discarded you like a piece of rubbish but they're actually going around telling people that you abuse them or that you were the bad person or that you had a lot of problems or making stuff up about you, saying you cheated in the workplace, saying you stole when it was actually them that did it. So many awful lies come very close usually to the discard in the aftermath of it. There are some instances where the smear campaign against you will be delayed and I'm really going to get into the smear campaign business to really knock it on its head so you understand totally what it's about, why the narcissist does it and just how actually evil it is. So guys, with that, you're very welcome to this channel. And today I would like to discuss the smear campaign in all its connotations, starting with when it started. Then we will get on to possibly in a different podcast, the reasons and the benefits to the narcissist of the creation of the smearing of your name and the hopeful downfall of you as the final nail in your coffin in a narcissist's attempt to literally wipe you out. Understanding it and understanding how to deal with it, I believe, are very crucial to somebody's, the beginning of somebody's awakening journey and a journey into themselves and a journey into building themselves after narcissistic abuse and for the rest of your life in gaining an understanding of this, what I would call negative, black, dark, demonic energy. So let's start at the very beginning. When the narcissist is love bombing you, when they're in that stage of what I would call infatuated euphoria, and indeed we often fall into this ourselves. It's catching the whole intensity of the love bomb. The narcissist building you up. You remember that phase, how good it felt. The future faking about now the two of you had found each other and you were going to have this amazing future. And what do you want, darling? Because I can give it to you and you know, you know the rest and you know how it didn't play out like that. But the initial stage was intoxifying in its happiness, but it was a false happiness because it wasn't built on reality and it wasn't built in stability. It was built on deception. We know that now, but it took quite a while for us to go through that painful journey of that realisation. The smear campaign started off in its inception with the narcissist bringing you around to friends and family, work colleagues, etc., and literally delighting in you, showing you off, showing you off as the trophy, you know, out of respect for you. They wanted the family to respect you. It was all part of the grooming of you, the building up of your ego, the building up of your belief in them and your love for them and positioning you 
this was the stage that the smear campaign started, believe it or not. You're going to say, well, how was that, Paula? This was the stage the narcissist got you to trust them and to love them and believe in the future. Believe that they had your back and believe that finally you had found the one, your soulmate, the person that was going to love you forever. This was the stage the narcissist was the easiest stage for the narcissist to extract personal information from you that they were going to use throughout the relationship to destabilize you, to enhance your self-doubt, to grow self-doubt if you didn't have it before, and for the very end stage of the smear campaign. Any juicy details, any skeletons that you had in your cupboard, the narcissist was opening those cupboard doors and having a feast and a party day for all the skeletons, if you had a good few in there, to come out, to jingle jangle and give the narcissist the full effect of everything that had happened to you when you were in a bad stage of your life, mistakes you'd made, we all have them. The narcissist really wanted to know about everything to do with you. And that was part and start of the smear campaign. They also started in that phase where they were bringing you around to friends and family and praising you up when they were getting very excited about what was to come in the relationship, what they perceived they were going to gain from you. And this is often in terms of monetary values or status or you know, position in the community or what you were going to bring to the table to them. That's what they actually fell in love with, not you, but they were very built up at this stage and very invested in promoting you because they wanted other people to, first of all, give them attention and then be jealous of them for a person like you being with them. Now, they're never going to let you know that, but they know a person's value. They accredit those values as something that they will be able to harness and take. But narcissists aren't stupid. They pick good people for good reasons. While they were building you up to the community in general, it was more a building up of the fact that you were in a relationship with them and that the two of you, you know, were heading towards an amazing future. So they would have triangulated their basic, their community, friends and family with you and wanting to be a cause of envy because they had hit on a great relationship. At the same time as they were doing this, they were just sliding in there under the radar that you had had quite a few problems prior to this in your life, but that they seem to be pretty well sorted now. And, you know, the narcissist had talked to you about them and you were coming on. You were definitely coming on. Now, this is a projection. This was them and the problems that they had in their past life. But whatever you may have said to them in the negative sense about yourself will be harped on and exaggerated and blown up. But often in a very believable, subtle way. The main thing they're getting across here is that you're doing better now and you're going to go on from strength to strength because you have them in your life. And a narcissist essentially has to do this because as they're love bombing you, you can't be better than them. So they're, they're essentially love bombing people with the relationship that they have with you and love bombing you with them but nobody is better than them. And that's why it's necessary for them to maintain that control and slip in the very start of the smear campaign with the general public or friends and family. Seeds of doubt about your troubled past. Very insidious, guys. Okay, so the other, the other reason that they start the smear campaign is because they know that they want total freedom and they instinctively know they want total control. Narcissists do not believe that the laws are for them, that rules of relationships and things that are held precious by humanity, integrity, loyalty, 
love, they're not bound by those unseen, unwritten laws. They will do exactly what they want. And in order for them to do that, and I'm talking about cheating, stealing, the works, the dark side, in order for them to do that, they know that in order for them to then succeed in the society or in the community they're in, they need to justify those activities, the cheating and whatever they're going to do. So they've learned by experience, by past experience, how to integrate into normal society. So you have to be the bad person to justify them having moments of weakness when they cheated or justifying why they're doing something to you when people that know you and like you and that have thought previously that you were a fine person will not be on your side but will say there is two sides to every story uh, the narcissist is actually making two sides to every story up and that is essentially what they're doing with the smear campaign within the relationship. So as the relationship goes on and the devaluation stage comes in, the narcissist is upping your devaluation to other people and it will be done in a believable way. So to friends and family, I'm worried about her. I'm worried about him. Not sure why she stayed out so late, you know, all night without letting me know. Um, blah, blah. Please leave in the comments what your narcissist said to other people about you. It'll give people a more wide ranging and probably very relatable um, reason or lie the narcissist told about you within the relationship. And oftentimes we don't discover what the narcissist has been saying to other people about us in the negative sense until the discard or the smear campaign gets fully in, fully fledged and fully out there. So the narcissist, when you remember those mini discards, when the narcissist has gone off for a weekend or decided to leave you for a week or say they're not happy with the relationship, they need space when they're looking into the new supply or whatever they get up to. The mini discards will be justified because the smear campaign has gotten underway and they're getting support from people who've believed them, who've believed that you throw bottles of whiskey against the wall or hit them on the head with uh, their shoes or steal things on them or gaslight them or that you've cheated with somebody else, which is exactly what they're doing and in the mini discard. So these are masters of deception, masters of propaganda, and they are doing this in the background unbeknownst to you. And I will guarantee you, if you've been with a narcissist, this will have been going on. It may not have been aimed at everybody, but there will be pillars in within the their community or your community that they have targeted with this information, or they've even told somebody who's a gossip in the locality who they know will spread this information because it's good gossip about you who'd never done anything like that before or who did something like that in the past, but it totally changed. So they will, just looking at my notes, guys. Yeah, this is the dangerous one. This is the dangerous one and this, please be very careful. And I'm not being sexist here because it happens with in both ways. Women, female narcissists will oftentimes use this much more against men, but it has been used in the opposite sense also. They are trying to establish a reason for the discard with the smear campaign in sometimes full view of you without you realizing that they're building a picture in people's minds and this often comes in with you being violent so what the narcissist does in these circumstances is trigger you into arguments 
um, do something awful on you and bait you and bring you down word salady rabbit holes to get you so wound up that you may go into reactive abuse by actually lashing out or you may not but just be shouting well they will record this out of context they may also have reported you to the local police gone and filed a complaint against you or just spoken to the local police about you they will have told family that you're being violent with them or that they're afraid of you this along with information gathering on things you may have done in the past are saved up and planned and agendized. So please do not tell me narcissists do not know what they're doing. Narcissists know exactly what they are doing. They will take this information and when they feel that they have got you or that they have enough info on you, they can even do this before the discard, call law enforcement officers on you and have you arrested. And this will build into their case for either getting your home or having custody of the kids or if you're a public figure, smearing your name. And watch this space for Meghan Markle when she divorces Prince Harry. His drug use will be used against him, even though she would have encouraged him to tell all about himself, tell all his secrets. He's gone and done that and it will be used against him and he's been totally set up for what's to come for him. So watch that. That's a typical manipulation of a narcissist telling you, go for it, darling. Tell your truth. Tell this. Do that. I'm behind you 100% of the way. It's a terrible shock for people when they're discarded and the whole story changes on its head 100% and it's used against you and you're kind of flummoxed there saying well I either did it or I told it but if it's taken out of context I don't do it anymore or um you know I she did I did it one time and they're now saying that I'm a serial abuser so watch it be very careful be very aware when somebody is repeatedly seeming to try and get you riled up for no particular reason. I know it's often too late for people. After the event, they find out what actually happened. But you can still use this as a benefit to yourself to be fully awake to the fact that there are people like this in the world that we didn't know existed before. We do now. We will be much stronger when we come across it again because we will even smell it from them. It's something that our senses come to know and at a later stage you can nearly pick up on the fact that you're in the same room as a narcissist. So guys, the reasons that narcissists use smear campaigns against us and start it with the initial, initial beginning of the relationship I think we've covered them there. The reasons that they will perpetuate the smear campaign after your discard or after the relationship has ended, we will get into in the next podcast. Please be careful if you're with a narcissist that they are not setting you up at this current point in time. If they are, please document if you can't leave the situation and get outside support because they will do everything they can to further their agenda and trigger you into an action that you wouldn't normally take. And taking that action and the information you've given them on you, the personal private details or the skeletons in the cupboard to whack you over the head with in the smear campaign and get whatever they came to the relationship for besides your personal destruction.